Hey guys, Ty here from Redwood.Fish. I wanted to talk to you really quickly about crab pots. Before we go out on any of our crab trips, I like to get the crab, crab pots out and do a little maintenance on them to make sure that everything's okay. Really quickly, I'll go through the crab pot and make sure the knots are tight. Everything looks okay. Um, the crab pot's been sitting for several months, so did it develop some rust in an area where it might fail and can I fix it with some twist ties or something like that? So I'll just go through really quickly, check the crab pots, make sure everything's tight, um, put new twist ties on where needed. And what I'm doing with this crab pot is I bought a couple of these little weights uh, because the old weight, I don't know where it went, but what we'll do is we'll tie a three pound weight like this to the bottom inside of the crab cage so it's got weight to it. When it falls down, um, it lands and it doesn't move with the tide and the current. So um, that's something I'm gonna do in a couple minutes, which is really important. I recommend everybody do that. Zip tie it down so it keeps a little bit or adds a little bit of weight to the crab pot and allows it to stay in one spot with the currents and the high tide and low tide and swells and stuff like that. Um, if it's, it, the worst thing you can do is have a light crab pot that gets pulled away and you can't find it when you go to retrieve it later on. Um, so that's really important to do that. Another fun thing that we like to do is we like to take our buoys and, and what I do is I'll put one of the kids names on the buoy. So this one is Cooper's. I have three boys. Cooper's 10, Easton is 7, and Magnus is 2. Um, and then when, when we retrieve those crab pots, uh, we'll pull them up and it's kind of a game that we play where, Coop, okay, we got Cooper's buoy coming up, his crab pot coming up because we pulled his buoy. And uh, if he's got a lot of crab in it, then he gets really excited and they celebrate. Um, the same thing for Easton or Magnus. So they have a little competition between the two, especially my two older ones, uh, Cooper and Easton. And it's fun to do. So what we'll do is, this wore off from last year. So what I'll do is I'll put my, my information, my fishing license information, and Cooper's name on it um, in big letters so we can retrieve it and it's fine. If I lose my crab gear, um, someone can find it and they can locate, or they can contact me via the the uh, fishing license identification number that I put on my buoy. Okay, so lastly, like I was saying before, was go through the crab pot, make sure everything looks okay, check the clamps, check the twist ties, ch check the tie downs, everything, all the knots are okay, and then when this crab pot checks out, I'll do the next one, and so on. And I'll also do that with our crab snares. We have tons of crab snares. So this is a crab pot that you drop down from shore, from a pier, or from a boat, and it falls down straight into the ocean. The crab walk in through these little doors at the bottom because they're chasing all the bait that you put inside the top here and seal it down. And then a couple hours later when you retrieve your crab pot, hopefully you have a bunch of nice Dungeness crab in there. Thanks for watching our video and be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Redwood.Fish. Stay tuned for more crab gear videos as well as many adventure fishing and crabbing videos. One tip for you, chicken works great as bait for crab fishing. From my family to yours, I want to say thank you, always be safe out on the water, and good luck fishing. We live really close to the smart train. Okay, so what, so what we'll do is we'll take a weight 